It's, um... Well, it's easier to be a parent this morning. It's easier to be a dad. It's easier, it's easier to tell your kids character matters. It matters. Tell them the truth matters. Being a good person matters. And it's easier for a whole lot of people. If you're Muslim in this country, you, you, you don't have to worry if the president doesn't want you here. If you're an immigrant, you don't have to worry if the president's going to be happier to have babies snatched away or send, send dreamers back for no re reason. <laughs> You can hear the celebration from blocks away as hundreds of people tapped and twirled on Black Lives Matter Plaza Sunday to continue the celebration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's projected presidential win. Danielle Parker says she finally has something to celebrate. And I'm just so excited for our country to come together, for my children, for my children's children. I'm just so excited. It was important to come down today because there's energy going on right now. Um, Biden just won, you feel me? There's a lot of love going around. But despite the block party-esque celebration, there were some who weren't here to celebrate. Standing in front of the White House fence with a sign that says this election is a fraud. But that didn't seem to put a damper on other people's spirits. That's great for me, great for her, great for all women of this wonderful country. And the dance party kept going anyway. We have never had this much division. And so for us to just come together as people, it's not about Republican, it's not about Democrat, it's about the American people. And we're just excited to be united again. As of tonight, there's no telling on when this party will end. In D.C., Colby Satterfield, WUSA 9. Folks have been... Vice President Biden, your reaction and just 40 percent of Americans say they would definitely agree to take a coronavirus vaccine if it was approved by the government. What steps would you take to give Americans confidence in a vaccine if it were approved? Make sure it's totally transparent. Have the scientists of the world see it, know it, look at it, go through all the processes. And by the way, He's, this is the same fellow who told you this is going to end by Easter last time. This is the same fellow who told you that, don't worry, we're going to end this by the summer. We're about to go into a dark winter, a dark winter, and he has no clear plan, and there's no prospect that there's going to be a vaccine available for the majority of the American people before the middle of next year. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of work to do. And if I'm elected your president, we're going to do it. We're going to act. We're going to need your help in doing it as well. We're going to act to get COVID under control. On day one of my presidency, I'll put in action a plan I've been taking about, talking about for months, already laid out, a national mandate, mask wearing, social distancing, testing, tracing, all things, as President Obama just said, that should have and could have been put in place months and months ago. A plan for a full and fair and free, I might add, distribution of therapeutics and vaccines when we get one. First, I'll go to every governor urge them to mandate mask wearing in their states. And if they refuse, I'll go to the mayors and county executives and get local masking requirements in place nationwide. As president, I'll mandate mask wearing in all federal buildings and all interstate transportation. Because masks save lives, period. Just look what happened in Arizona. 
Republican governor initially tried to bar local governments from implementing mandates on their communities. What happened? In June, Arizona got hit with a surge of cases. Hospitals were flooded. The state health system was overwhelmed. So cities and counties appealed the governor's ruling. They imposed their own local mandates, covering most of the state. The result? Cases fell by 75 percent. Wearing a mask is not a political statement. It's a scientific imperative. I consider the Trump administration a danger to the world that will disappear in 2020. What if I told you that Bill Gates, Greta Thunberg, Al Gore, George Soros, Prince Charles, and Cardinal Turkson were meeting in the mountains to plot a global new order to be established on the back of the COVID pandemic? An outrageous movie plot? Or is it absolutely true? Here's where the leaders of the world are admitting exactly what I'm saying, that this is a Trojan horse. Now in Davos, they call it the Great Reset. And it's scheduled now to kick off in January 2021. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. What is it that would make it so that history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset? The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. That's the Davos Summit and the Great Reset. They need President Joe the Catholic Biden to hand us, the United States, over to them if he wins this election. This is why they're trying so hard to take Donald Trump down. Biden is not a serious candidate. We can all agree on that, right? He's not serious. The poor fellow, he's in his dotage now. So what are they doing? They don't want a serious candidate. I'm not talking about on the right. I'm talking about on the left. They don't want someone who's going to be serious. Everyone with a pulse knows Joe Biden can't do this job. What's he doing there then? In my opinion, he's the personified monument to the U.S. presidency that the mob will tear down in January. They need to reset everything, including the politics of the United States, the governance of the United States. Besides that, old Joe the Catholic Biden has always been a New World Order guy. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. And we'll be faced with equally consequential decisions in the 21st century. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. 